Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and this week on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast, I talk with Eric Nevins about podcasting and the Christian Podcaster Association, plus scripture and nerdy news, and we'll get to all of that right after this. Hey nerds, this is David with Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. We believe that pop culture is the mythology of our generation. There is a story, it is written on our souls, and that all of these myths speak to that story. And that is why every Tuesday I talk about Star Wars and Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings and whatever nerdy things we can think of with my two sons, Sam and Nate. It is a 30 to 45 minute celebration of all the weirdness that we love so much. Basically, mom said we couldn't talk about it at the kitchen table anymore, so we decided to start a podcast. We hope you'll check it out. It's on every podcast app out there. Tatooine Sons, that's Tatooine S-O-N-S. Thanks so much for joining me this week. We are excited to be part of the Christian Nerd HQ Podcast Network. You just heard from Tatooine Sons, uh, Dad and his two boys talking about pop culture. Uh, along with them and Christian Nerds Unite, we're also joined by Fangirling Over Jesus, who does a great nerdy devotional, and the Reverend and the Reprobate, who interview people they have no business interviewing, and the Speaking Nerdy Podcast, where two good friends talk about all things nerdy. Uh, make sure you go to ChristianNerdHQ.com to follow all the podcasts and check out the Christian Nerd HQ YouTube channel for exclusive content we're making together. Let's start with some scripture. Let's read Acts 13, 2 through 5. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was there with them as their helper. So Saul, also called Paul and Barnabas, were sent out to preach the gospel of Jesus. We're all called in the Great Commission to share the gospel. This weekend, I had the honor of speaking to a group of ministry leaders from several parts of the world. I was on a Zoom call with them while they were all in a conference center in an Asian country. Uh, I was sharing how our Finding God Online ministry helps indigenous believers in hard countries find seekers online and then coach them to meet face to face. Some statistics say that there are 4.9 billion people using some form of social media around the world, and the fastest growing populations on social media are in non-Western countries, making social media the largest mission field in the world. It can be an amazing tool for reaching those who are searching for something in their lives. I've seen God moving in amazing ways through the use of media in hard-to-reach countries. I pray that you will ask God how you can be used to reach people with the gospel through things like social media. Now for some nerdy news. Disney announced on May 10th that it would be removing some content from both Disney Plus and Hulu. Recent reports are saying that this content will be removed on or around May 26th. This should allow Disney to get some tax breaks uh, for losses. While most of the content is documentary style shows or behind the scenes or competition like shows, things like The World According to Jeff Goldblum, uh, Marvel's Project Hero, or Be Our Chef, some are more substantial scripted series and movies like 2020's Black Beauty uh, and the Willow series that's only six months old. Some reports say that there are around 100 titles that will be removed. 
Disney has also announced that they will be closing Star Wars Galactic Cruiser Hotel at Disney World. Galactic Cruiser has won awards for outstanding achievement in themed entertainment and received some of the highest guest ratings ever. But with prices as high as $6,000 for a family for the 48-hour stay, many have criticized it as too expensive. In a statement, Disney said, This premium boutique experience gave us the opportunity to try new things on a smaller scale of only 100 rooms. And as we prepare for its final voyage, we will take what we've learned to create future experiences that can reach more of our guests and fans. With the custom built hotel and view screens instead of windows for the immersive experience, it's unclear how they will repurpose the property or if they even can. The last voyage of the Galactic Cruiser will take place September 28th through 30th of this year. Fast 10 finally knocks Chris Pratt out of the number one spot at the box office this weekend. With $67 million domestically and over $318 million globally, Reviews are split with a 54% critic score and an audience score of 87%. Uh, Vin Diesel is joined once again by Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, John Cena, Jason Stamos, and Ludacris. New to the franchise are Jason Momoa and Brie Larson. Most audience reviews I have read say, don't expect an an amazing storyline, but do expect some amazing cars, spectacular effects, and uh, some unbelievable stunts. Um, Now let's get into our interview with Eric Nevins from the Christian Podcasters Association. Eric Nevins, it is great to have you today. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So um, you are involved in podcasting, and you've been doing this for quite some time. You actually are a podcaster and a coach for podcasters. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. You know how did how did all this start, and and what got you into this, and, and why do you, why are you doing it? Yeah, well, it's kind of a long story, but I'll give you the short version. Um, definitely podcasting was not something that was on my radar. I actually wanted to be a pastor originally and okay. went to school. So I did, um, I crammed a three-year degree into nine years uh, to get my <laughs> Master of Divinity. Long story. Um, but when I, fin- I, I, when I finished, I had the beautiful, fortuitous timing of graduating during the downturn, you know, from 2008, like in the Great Recession. Mm. So um, it, I just never really ended up some of the jobs that were there that I could have gotten mm-hmm. or would have wanted to get uh, weren't there anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up staying in corporate America. I worked at a, I call it bank jail because I would go to work and I would, I would sit in my <laughs> six by six cube and not come out until somebody told me I was allowed to have lunch or something, you know? And uh, I, but w- during that time I discovered podcasting, I switched jobs from uh, working on the, in a call center, listening, you know, waiting for a phone call to come in. Mm-hmm to actually where a job where I had to work for a living, where I had to click buttons and <laughs> bounce people's checks, which leaves a little scar in your soul when you, your job is just to ruin people's day a little bit. Um, <laughs> that was what I did. But in order to entertain myself, I put in my ear earbuds, right? And started okay. to listen. And I found podcasting and I listened to a ton of the, I mean, for me, they were the luminaries, right? People like, um, you know, Amy Porterfield and Michael Hyatt and Cliff Ravenscraft and, Johnny Dumas and Serial and like all, all those all things. The you big know. names. Yeah. Back in 2013, 14, you know, all those people, I started listening to them and I started realizing, hey, I could do this. And one night I was doing some overtime and I was talking to this guy on the phone and he goes, you've got a great voice. You should be on the radio. I was like, yeah, well, I don't know how to do that. Right. But it inspired this thought that maybe I could have a podcast. And so I started thinking about it. What could that do? How could I um, actually pursue this? And then as it developed, because I still cared, I went to my emphasis in, in seminary. I got a master of divinity with an emphasis in Christian formation. Okay. And so I started asking myself the question, how can I actually be developing um, that and contributing to that conversation uh, still? Mm-hmm. And podcasting seemed like a great way to do that. So I, I started a show called Halfway There in 2016, all about Christ, about the Christian spiritual journey. 
kind of the ups and the downs, the things we go through that, uh, you know, we never really talk about. When I was a kid, it was the story was always my life was terrible. Then I met Jesus. Now my life is great. Right. Yeah. Which is awesome, except for all the other things that happen in life. And I think it's also, <laughs> yes, it's also uh, attested not only in scripture, but among God's people for the last 2000 years. And so I wanted to tell that story. And that's what I get people to do. So that's kind of how I got into podcasting. Okay. I became a podcasting coach. I always kind of wanted to be a coach, but I started a group of Christian podcasters, which you're, you're part of Christian podcasters association, uh, in 2017, then it kind of grew. And, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I was like, I need to do something with this started a membership in 2020 and now it's just kind of become my business. It's the thing that I do. Very cool. Um, so when you were listening to podcasts and you started getting interested in this idea, what is it that actually attracted you to podcasts mm. particularly versus any other form of listening? You could have been listening to the radio, could have been listening to music. What was it about podcasts that intrigued you? Well, I love the content. I love the new content, right? It was stuff that I'd never heard before. Uh, things that I can learn. Now, I did do other things like audiobooks. I would sit because I literally had 40 hours a, a week, right? Just sitting yeah. there basically trying to entertain myself. So I would listen to entire biographies of like George Washington or somebody, 40 hours of audio, and I would, <laughs> ki- you know, kill it in a week and a half because I couldn't listen all 40 hours. Um, so there was, th- there was a lot of that, but it, I just, I love the information. It, I think there was something else that happened too. Um, what I found out is a lot of those people, not all of them, right? But a number of them were actually believers as well. And mm-hmm. some of the, the principles they were talking about, serve your audience first, right? Serve, serve, mm-hmm. serve before you ask for something back. Mm-hmm. I found just to be really consistent with uh, a Christ-like value. And that really intrigued me. That made me go, wow, mm-hmm. this is this is maybe something that I could do. I think I've always had a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit as well. And so I thought, I mean, as a pastor, that's a good thing, right? You can, you start things and do whatever, but, um, that was sort of dormant for a while. And so also they were inspiring me to call this piece of myself out that I just hadn't had a chance Mm -hmm. to express. So I think it was a lot of that. So you kind of had an idea for a topic. But if, if someone out there is considering a podcast, what kind of things should they think through, you know, work through to figure out what topic is good for a pop- possible podcast? You know, why why they should choose that particular one? You know, what kind of thought process should somebody go through? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a few questions you can ask yourself. I think one is, what are you interested in? Uh, what, it, what do you really love talking about that you can never stop talking about? Right. Uh, Cause you're going to make a lot of content if you start a podcast and you need to be able to talk about it. Also part of that, by the way, um, is being able to repeat yourself, being willing to repeat yourself, right. About, about your topic. I think that's maybe neglected as a, as a mm. skill. Sometimes we think, oh, well, I've said that. No, man. Like the way this works is you just say the thing over and over and over again until people get it. Right. That's just the, what's called leadership. That's just the way that yeah. it goes. Anyway. Isn't uh, that what pastors do? Totally. Yeah, t- absolutely. It's just, we, we preach the same sermons multiple times in slightly different ways. Right. Right. Marketing is all works the same. So ask yourself that question. I would ask yourself the question, what do people come to you for mm-hmm. that? Uh, maybe you, uh, keep finding people asking you questions about podcasting is a great uh, tool for that to answer those questions in a way that they can uh, connect. So um, that's one, one option. And then uh, I would say, I would also ask yourself, like, what is the change that you want to see in the world? Like, what is the conversation that you really want to contribute to? So for me, that was spiritual formation, the Christian spiritual journey. How do we change how we talk about our, our stories? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I have another show, the Christian podcaster, where I'm contributing to like, like, how do I inspire people to start podcasts, right? How do I inspire them to grow their show? How do I inspire them to join the things that I'm doing so that I can help them? So there's, there's lots of, uh, questions like that, but those are the ones that I would start with. And then you can always ask, like, ask, ask your friends, like what, if I started a podcast, what would it be about? 
you can dial in your message. There's a whole lot to that, but start there. Very cool. And when you're, when you're getting started, what are some things you need to kind of have in line before you start a podcast? Okay. So I have this kind of framework that, uh, is kind of the steps of building your podcast. And it's because I went to seminary, I'm contractually obligated to alliterate them. So they're, they're all, <laughs> they all start with them. So it's mindset first is the thing that you have to show up with. You have to understand. I think there's a couple things. Some of, the, some of these things are, I think, biblical principles, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, just following what, what God's asked you to do. And, and there's, there's some other things in there, but you have to be committed to showing up and doing the work for the podcast and doing it even when it seems hard. And even when you don't get the results that you're wanting, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of podcasters find this, particularly if you don't already have an audience, somebody like, uh, you know, I don't know, Joe Rogan or some of the people in the like top, top, top echelon, right? They already right. had audiences. The reason they're there is because they built audiences on other platforms, right? Like TV or other places, right? For a long time. So don't expect that. But if it's hard, um, you need to have a mindset that you're going to just keep doing it. So one of the key uh, questions I had to answer early on in my podcasting journey was, am I going to show up? Am I going to do seasons and give myself a reason to take a break? Or am I going to show up every week and just keep producing? And I know it was Cliff Ravenscraft who said the best way to grow a podcast is to show up week after week after week after week, same day, same time, and just keep keep publishing. So I committed to doing that. That meant a lot of late Sunday nights because I had a Monday episode that I wanted to get out, but I did it. And that was a key mindset shift for me. Okay, so the mm -hmm. second one is message. And we've talked about this a little bit uh, when you're trying to figure out what you want to say, but you have to have a transformation that you're promising the audience. And if mm. you do that, um, not, it does a couple things. One, it settles something for yourself that you know that you're offering something of value mm -hmm. and that it's worth showing up for, even if your audience isn't as big as you'd like. Um, so I think that's really powerful, but it also attracts people who want the thing that you're offering, right? It helps you clarify who you're going to talk to, and um, maybe even how you're going to speak to them, right? So, like, there's there's a lot of things in there that um, can can work. So then I got the, the other parts of it, but um, it's like so it's mechanics, which is all the stuff we think about, like our microphones and mm -hmm. you know hosting and all that jazz, and then uh, marketing and the monetization, which is the thing everybody wants to start with, but it's at the end of the road, right? So you got to start, you got to get all these other things down so that you can actually build that. Are there some tactics that uh, new post podcasters should should know or learn? Maybe things that they don't just don't naturally have. Well, the first thing I would I would think about is a microphone, right? Is microphone technique. So, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know how to use a microphone, and you have to learn it. Neither did I, right? Do when, when first neither did you. So we had to figure it out. Uh, so like, if you want like mine and I think your, yours probably too, we're, we're both speaking sort of past our microphones, not like yeah. right, right into it, you know, cause then you get yeah. something very different. <laughs> we're, we're close enough to it that it picks it up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly, I understand right? exactly what you mean. <laughs> exactly. There's a, <laughs> there's a way to do that. So I, th I would say, learn your microphone technique, speak, speak past it, let it pick you up. But then, mm -hmm. uh, as you're speaking that way, it doesn't catch all your, your plosives they're called, right? Um, so I think that's one good thing to do. I think, um, as far as other skills, I think you should learn how to edit. And I think your first 50 or hundred episodes, you should edit yourself just to kind of get, get to know yourself a little bit as you, as you listen. I think that's a good thing. Um, I think you should learn a little bit of marketing and copywriting, uh, to learn how to start with a problem that, that your audience is experiencing, how to demonstrate to them that the, there's some stakes to this problem and why they need to have that resolved and then let your episodes give them a solution. So there's a lot of skills, but they all kind of take a, take a little bit of a time to develop. Gotcha. Um, what about scripting? You, 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 you mm. kind of, you kind of alluded that I, I use the term scripting. Yeah. Um, is that something that, um, that every podcaster should do? Is there there a, a minimal amount of scripting you should do, um, yeah. or is it better to you know do something more robust 
what what are your ideas and thoughts about scripting? Yeah, okay. Well, so the answer is maybe. So it all depends on your show. So <laughs> what we're really talking about is format, right? So what's your format going to be? Mm -hmm. And so I'll give you an example of my show, and then I'll give you some other examples. So my podcast, Halfway There, I don't script very uh, heavily, but... Uh, somebody said, a friend, you, you know, Tim Winders said to me not too long ago, um, that he, uh, listened to my show and he realized like across years, right. Episodes mm -hmm. that my open is always basically the same. And it has been for a really long time. Right. Well, that's yeah. because I have that scripted. So I, I know <laughs> what I'm going to say. Welcome to halfway there. This is the show where we have honest conversations with ordinary Christians about today's Christian experience. I'm your host, Eric Nevins. Okay, so now you know what the show's about, you know what it's called, and you know who I am, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to give, I have a kind of a spiel about things you can do, right? A little call to action. And then I bring in my guests and I do all that within 60 seconds. Well, that is good because it helps my audience know if you're here for the first time, you know who I am, you know what's going on. Um, if you're, you know, it's also familiar if you're a regular listener, and I don't think you can... Mm -hmm underestimate how valuable that is. Yeah. Um, and then you go into your, to your content. So some things I think should be scripted like that. I think at the end, I, I, I don't have a script per se, but I do have some things that I say, go visit this, my guest website, check out halfway there podcast.com. And you know, like I've got those things in between though, should it be scripted? Well, that's, a, that's all depends on what you're doing. If you're having a, um, we can talk about if you want, if you're doing an interview, how to prepare for that interview. There's a couple ways to do that. Um, if you were, I don't, I never liked just doing uh, sermons, like just from a script. I'm not very good at reading those. So I prefer bullet points. And so I do it that way, but it all depends on your style, depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So there's a lot, a lot to get into that. So, um, because you and I are friends and we've, um, I've, follow you on social media. I saw you make a comment uh, about how much harder it is <laughs> than you realized it was to do solo podcasts, you know, yeah. just you talking into a mic um, or talking into a mic and a camera versus a interview style. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about those two different things. Why, why would one or the other be, preferred not necessarily your preference but um why should somebody consider both before they make a decision on what kind of podcast they really want to make yeah so i'm not sure that it is harder necessarily i think it just it was for me right i think it, i think it i'm practiced at doing interviews i've done 340 interviews for my show i did a bunch of interviews for podcast magazine i've done some other interviews for the christian podcaster so maybe let's say close to 400 interviews. I could do those, right? Like I know how to do those now. But when it came to doing, I posted that because when it comes to doing like a solo episode, I'm just starting to do some of those for the Christian podcaster because my sort of five pillars, right? My five steps, I'm trying to get that out. I want people to hear that. I want it to, to mm -hmm. help. And so I'm trying to do this practice. I want people to see me as like, oh, Eric knows what he's talking about with this stuff. So I started creating episodes and I... I did one and I listened to it the next week or like later. And I was like, I don't like this at all. This is not, this is not good. I don't, it's, it's not great. I was going to re-record it. I came back to it a couple weeks later. I listened to it. It wasn't that bad, right? It was, it was fine. <laughs> it's just in that moment. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. So um, I actually published it yesterday and guess what happened? Two people email responded to the email. Somebody posted in the Facebook group, Eric, Thanks for publishing that. It was really helpful. Can't wait to hear as you elaborate on each of those five things in the episode. So that is like, it, it, was, it was harder, I think, mentally for me, right? It was harder for me to go, I'm speaking. I got to bring, you know, the thing. What's my kind of attitude toward my listener and that kind of thing? I think it was just a little bit, it was unique for me. Um, <laughs> the, either way, though, I think one of the best, um, tips that I've ever gotten is from a, a guy um, named Tim. He was a, he was a, his name was Tim. He is a kind of radio legend in Denver here where, where I live. And he told me what you got to do is you got to have an empty chair in your, in your office or in your studio and imagine your listener sitting there, right? 
Mm. And so then you're talking to them. And this works on interviews as well as solo shows. So what I do when I'm like interviewing somebody is I will imagine that there's that my avatar, my person that I'm talking to is in that chair. And mm. occasionally you'll hear on halfway there, I'll start to direct something toward them. So they'll say, Hey, did you hear that? Like, check this out. You should, you should be doing this. Look for mentors or whatever the thing is I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, that's my thoughts on it. Okay. Well, and as far as interviews, how do you prep for something like that? Yeah, I think there's two ways to prep for an interview. Um, and I do, I do it both ways. So for halfway there, I know what I want to get out of that conversation, which is basically a, I want to go through somebody's spiritual journey, their events with, with the Lord moments that they, uh, question him or came to faith initially people who mentored them, things like that. So I'm going to ask those kind of questions. I've got kind of a template that I'm going to ask. And so I'm just going to, I don't ask the same questions the same way every time, but I'm going to just kind of go walk through their journey in that way. So I do very little preparation for that. I kind of know who they are. If they got a book or something, I'll look at it. Um, but I'm not doing a ton. Now with the Christian podcaster, I take the other approach, which is, I script about seven to 10 questions. It's only had 30 minutes, but I try to have some questions so that I know the direction of the episode mm -hmm. and I know where I want to go and I know what um, the audience is going to get. So I even write a purpose statement for that episode so that I know at the end, like I did one this week uh, with a guy named Chris Granger who has a uh, membership for men. And I said on there, but the end, um, listeners will have, they'll be inspired to start their own community for their podcast audiences. Mm. That's what I wanted. So I think being intentional about it like that, and that you don't show up and just kind of ramble and do that. Follow curiosity for sure. Did you know Larry King never prepared for any interview? He like would wow. just, do, he would just show up and like ask some questions. The only time that got him in trouble was with Jerry Seinfeld when he was like, Larry King said, suggested that Seinfeld went off the air because it got canceled. And Jerry Seinfeld was a little bit incredulous <laughs> about that. And I don't blame him. So it can burn you, right? But prepare at least a, a, at least a, a little bit and then be open enough to follow curiosity, I think is helpful as well. Very cool. Well, how would somebody learn more about podcasting? You know, if they want to, if they were like, you know, I, I'm interested in this. I'm not sure it's for me. What should they do to, to kind of feel that out? Well, so the first thing I'm going to say is you should listen to a bunch of podcasts. Go check out a bunch. Like take a topic that you're interested in mm -hmm. and search that in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you go and listen to just one episode of like seven different shows. Pick a, pick a bunch. Cause you're going to get some observations about format style, mm -hmm. things that you like. Um, you know, my style came about because there were some people that I listened to, but then they had other people on their show and I started listening to their show and I kind of pieced it all together from, from all these people that resonate with me. Right. So mm -hmm. check that out and that, that'll give you an idea and start to imagine, ask yourself, could I do this? Could I do that? What would that look like? Cause you can find that joy and that kind of piece of you that you bring to your show. Um, that is what is going to keep you going, right? That's, what's going to really be connecting to an audience. People will feel that they'll hear it in your voice and they'll enjoy it. So, uh, definitely do that. I think also, um, like I don't, you know, there's lots you can find at like Christian podcast association.com. I've got a lot of tools and things for that there as well. Um, and then, when we're talking about, you mentioned that you don't like just trying to like read a, a sermon on a podcast, but in your podcast, you are, you know, sharing the gospel in a, in a, a different format. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, why did you choose to do it that way? And do you feel like that is, is a, a better way? Or do you think that is something that um, why did you choose? I guess the question yeah. is, why did you choose to do it that way rather than just making a gospel presentation? Oh boy. There's a whole story to this, Ricky. So, <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So I was a terrible preacher. 
I do not enjoy actually <laughs> telling people what to do, right? So that was already on my radar. But uh, right after I graduated school, I started a, a political blog about Christians and politics. Quickly figured out I don't have much to say about that. I have no authority. I'm not in that world. I just thought I wanted to pop off about some things. Well, while I was doing that, I discovered that um, publishers will send you books for review, right? If you're a blogger, because this was when blogging was really big. I'm sure they okay. still do. But so I asked for a couple. One of them, by the way, is a book by Mike Sayers, um, who's a pastor here in Denver, wrote, started a church. It's called Pure Scum. He started a church called Scum of the Earth in Denver. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. Great, great stuff. Anyway, check that out. But the second one I got was by Oz Guinness, a, a book called a free people's suicide. Now it's, this is sort of political phil philosophical, you know, kind of stuff, not like uh, some of his other kinds of works. Um, although he has, he does write on that. Uh, but what he convinced me of is toward the end of the book, he starts talking about character and how character really needs uh, is kind of the key component, particularly in the United States or maybe anywhere, but in the United States where we have uh, a democracy, um, or republic it only matters right what's written in the constitution or your laws so so long as people are willing to enforce it right so long as the character to be bound by what's in the law that that is what matters okay so this got me thinking i started asking myself the question how do you change character right so um i think people and i'm still thinking politically people on the left and the right have very different views of that right so sometimes uh people on the on the right which is where i tended to be uh want to pass laws right so we're just going to change it and we're going to make it illegal well okay people on the other side of the aisle would be like let's just tell a few stories right let's let's make some movies let's make some let's make uh make some tv shows and it turns out to be very very successful so i realized how do people change how to change character well actually um you tell stories and this is actually how societies have changed character and shaped mm -hmm. character of their people forever this is why we have things like the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? For Israel, what was that? That was a recalling of stories about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob mm -hmm. in their thing, right? The reason that they cel celebrate Passover is because that's telling the story again of how God delivered the people. And we have our own in in um, you know Christmas and Easter and and whatnot. So stories are really, really powerful. So the reason I chose to do that is partly because I was a bad preacher and partly because I just wanted to let the stories speak for themselves mm -hmm. and let people make their own conclusions. This is one thing that really is kind of one of the main things in my heart about this. You have to trust podcasting is an art, right? And in art, mm -hmm. you have to trust your audience to be able to get the meaning. Mm -hmm. So you don't always have to make it explicit. If you're an evangelist, maybe you're called to do that, right? So I'm not gonna tell you not to. I just know that's not my what where I need to be. But you don't always have to make it plain, right? Sometimes you have to plant the seeds, plant that little bit of, oh, this is a thing in somebody's heart and let the Holy Spirit take it from there and mm -hmm. see what happens. It's not all up to us. So anyway, that was a whole like process <laughs> for me to to kind of get through and it took a couple of years, but that's how I ended up in the story podcast. So since you, you know, you, you're kind of in this story world. Um, and, uh, uh, some people listening to this or watching this may be, may be soaked in the social media world, which is a little more bite-sized mm -hmm. than most podcasts are. Why do you think that that longer form podcast style is is still useful and still effective oh yeah well i think people like it right i think people so people people will listen this is the thing people get everybody thinks that um bite size or like that people's attention spans are getting shorter but you know what the most popular podcasts in the world are two and three hours right because mm -hmm. they're they're listening to it while they're doing other things mm -hmm. so like just like me sitting in my cubicle at bank jail listening to um you know podcasts 40 hours a week because i entertain me most people are doing that so i don't think um i don't think that really is the is the deal i think people want more content in fact i don't even like 
I know some people do this. Don't don't tell anybody I said this, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like shorter shows, right? If you're de- you're telling me, oh, I'm going to do ten or fifteen minutes, okay. I probably I that doesn't interest me, right? I want I want the stuff. Yeah. I think I want substance. I want something that's gonna that's gonna be there. But other people do. So and I know like Jerry Dugan has Jerry Jerry's sort of a anyway. He's got Jerry shorts, which is funny. He's kind of a play on his height, but he um he does that in his in his episode between his episodes, and it really works for him. So there's mm-hmm. a place for that. You really have to figure out. This is the answer for everything. What does your audience want? What do they need? So you got to figure that out, and that's that's what I would recommend. But man, I like the long stuff. I want to hear. Get into it. Look at the diamond from every facet, and let's let's mm. let's think about it. That's me, though. Well, when you're thinking about a podcast, and let's say you're you're starting to create a podcast, how do you how do you get the word out? How do you how do you find the listeners to bring them in to 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 bother to listen the first time? Yeah. Well, I think there's a few things you have to do. You need to be where your listeners are. So that's maybe where social media comes in. Right. Mm-hmm. So I have a five part thing for that marketing, um, uh, kind of template. I think first of all, email is really important. So if you don't have an email list as a podcaster, that's the first thing I'm going to tell you to do. Get an email list, collect emails, create some sort of really easy lead magnet download that you can give away. So, um, somebody was telling me this week about theirs that, um, was like 10 scripture passages about to help you be a better dad or something like that. Right. So like, okay, fine. And it's just two or three pages. It's just the passages. It's just Mm -hmm. enough to get you thinking that's it. And it's enough to get an email. So you need an email. And then every time you publish an episode, you're going to email that list. Right. Mm -hmm. Social media is another thing. Hang out where your audience is most. So if they're Mm -hmm. trying to reach young people, don't post on Facebook and think you're going to do it. You got to be on TikTok, right? That's just the way it's going to (laughs) be. It's life right now. Um, yep. So that's just, you, you got to do that. Um, what else? So then after so social media, that's so hang out there, wh- wherever your people are, respond to comments. Michael Hyatt, by the way, and his book platform had a really good approach to Twitter. At the time he wrote, Twitter was the big deal, right? But it works for everything. Show up, set yourself a, a schedule for 20 minutes every day to just show up on Twitter, interact with some conversations and post your your stuff so your your thoughts as well 20 minutes a day really is all you need like if you do that it will you'll start to see results in a few weeks uh okay so 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 email email social media i think having great guests is really valuable as well mm-hmm. so getting people on your show that that uh your audience wants to hear from that you can borrow who are if they already have an audience and you can borrow their audience uh for an episode some of those people will stick around and listen to more of your episodes mm-hmm. if they like it so having great guests is great i mentioned already getting books from publishers never pay for a book again start a podcast never pay for a book again it's great (laughs) i do i ask for books i got one this week that i i had asked uh for uh i had asked to have the author a couple years ago well it wasn't the right time i got her coming up next week and we shot the publisher they sent me the book for free right that's fantastic so that's one another little side there then you got to be a guest which is what we're here doing, right? So like you show up on, on shows, uh, try to get on shows where the audience overlaps with yours. And I would say even go widely, right? So go to other shows mm-hmm. where the audience doesn't always overlap with yours. That's okay because some of those people will want to hear more from you and they'll check out your show. Finally, I think you got to start a community. So mm-hmm. um, community, if you're bringing in people who resonate with your message, with your topic, um, and we, the, the struggle and the problem that you're solving, uh, definitely bring them together because, uh, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, um, they're going to serve each other and then mm-hmm. you're the one who's facilitating that. And that, uh, is really, really valuable. Um, and I also think you then don't have to be at the center of the attention, right? So you can actually mm-hmm. make it more about, um, a, about them, but then you also have them in a place where you can reach them. Right. So that's also helpful. Now, are you are you taking your um, podcast? And I, I guess actually, before I ask that, um, how do you feel about using pod? Because podcast is traditionally audio, mm-hmm. um, but uh, like you and I are recording video. 
And uh, are, are you using both of those mediums for your podcast? Um, is that something you feel like is effective? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, so many. I have so many thoughts. <laughs> so <laughs> I would, it depends on your level of skill, right? So I would say, can you do a video podcast? Can you record it and put it on YouTube? Yeah, you can. Um, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. So the best example I've seen actually is Tim Winders again. He recorded every video of every single uh, podcast he did, but it wasn't until like his 100th episode, I think, that he started to do YouTube and he started to put them out on onto YouTube. Mm. So, and I think that was partly because like, it's just a different skill, right? It's just a different, mm -hmm. a different thing. So depends on where your level of skill is. If you're, I, I'm an audio guy, so I really prefer audio and that's what I do halfway there. I don't record video at all. Um, Christian podcaster. When I do an interview, I record video someday that'll end up on YouTube. It'll be a thing. So yeah, is it great? Is it, the good thing about YouTube is you can monetize eventually, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, I know there's some requirements and things to that, but, um, it's good. I just encourage podcasters take one thing at a time, learn one skill mm -hmm. and then do the next skill. And that's, that's the way, um, cause I don't want you to be overwhelmed. The last thing I want is for somebody to start a show and then get overwhelmed with all the work mm -hmm. and not continue the show. So if it's too much work, don't do it. And are you repurposing any of your content? to use it in a different way or format. Um, I'm trying to, so I'm trying to start d doing that because um, the aforementioned TikTok is like, I would really <laughs> love to have videos like this where I can put it on to uh, TikTok and go, Hey, this is something, you know, whatever, this is 60 seconds of something that was great in this episode. Um, I don't know how well those perform always, but yeah, I think it's a great idea if you can figure it out. So there are social, there are AI tools now that you can use that will do mm -hmm. some of this for you. That'll cut things up, um, which is great. So take advantage of it. But again, if you can't do it all, don't don't worry about that. Yeah, just get the content produced. That's the first place to start. Um, so you're speaking to a group of people who are who are curious about social media or just getting started in social media or looking to expand their, their media functions, their abilities. Uh, why, why should they consider podcasting first? And what do you think is the, the highest and best use for that kind of content, that mm. podcasting content? Yeah. Well, so one good thing about podcasting, particularly if you're creating content uh, regularly, say every week, is it does give you the opportunity to create something that you can use across a whole bunch of different kinds of media, right? So you have the audio that goes out in your RSS feed as a podcast. If you record the video, you can cut that up into clips, which would be good. But there's one thing that I do that, um, like I grab quotes out of every single episode that I that I do that can become quote cards, right? That you can post on Instagram or on other places. Um, I write a paragraph about the episode, right? And that goes into my, in my thing. So then I have something else to share. So I think podcasting can be really versatile. You you're creating a lot there that you can mm -hmm. share. You can do the, you know, audiograms. A lot of people like to do those as well. So things like that. So there's, there's a lot you can do with it that um, makes it really, versatile and i think that's kind of under appreciated I, I think we make content creation too hard sometimes right it's actually way easier than than we think that you mentioned audiograms for those who might not be familiar with that term i know what you're talking about but oh, for yeah. those who aren't familiar with that term wh what are we talking about yeah so an audiogram is like a picture a static picture with audio placed over it so that it looks like a video and it's playing video, I guess it's playing audio over top of a picture or maybe a, a video or something. So it looks cool and gives people a taste of the show. What else do you, would you want um, an aspiring uh, podcaster to know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think I would start with, so definitely start with your mindset, like we said, and then I would say, nail down your message, figure out your message. Now this can always be adjusted as you go, 
but um, if you can put it in terms of who you help, what you help them do, and the transformation they're going to get uh, because you you they listen to your show, right? Um, that will do a lot for you. And then you can add underneath that the ways that you help them do those things and find that transformation. That figuring out your message like that, I think is one of the key, key components because you're going to attract the right people uh, through your podcast. Um, it takes a little bit of effort. You have to be specific. A lot of us want to want to use very non-specific, generic, I'll say Christianese sometimes uh, <laughs> words, right? You know what I mean? So, the, and those things um, are delightful, but they do not say much, right? And so they're not specific. You gotta get really specific, uh, more specific than you think you need to be. And then you'll probably tweak it even a little bit more. But when, if you get there, then that can help you a lot. And it makes all the other work worth it. And any encouragement out there to, to those who are thinking about doing it, do it, get started. So it took me two years to start my podcast and that was like a year and a half too long. So you, you should just get started. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Your, your first, you know, whatever 50 episodes might not be as good as you would like them to be. You might not be as practiced on the mic as you would like to be. Um, but you're going to get better at it. And you, you just have to do it. Just show up, do the episodes, put in the reps, have that growth mindset and get started. You should, you should start sooner than later. You said, you know, to keep with it, you know, to, to say you're going to do this, you're going to commit to it. If someone's looking at podcasting, how long should they commit to before they decide, yes, I'm going to do this? Is there, is there like, if you're not going to do it for a certain amount of time, it's probably not something you should dive into. I encourage people to start in podcast for a year, commit yourself to publishing an episode every week for one year and see what that's like. Cause I think that's long enough. You're going to get your rhythm down. You're going to get the process down to a, to the point where you can do it pretty quickly, might wake more quickly than you do at first. And you'll start to, be seeing some results, right? You'll start to see it mm. uh, develop there. And then after a year, you can ask yourself the question, how long do I want to keep doing this? Can it, do I want to commit to another year? I think you should. About two years, there's kind of an inflection point about that episode 100. Mm. Um, there's, there's, it seems like people start to take you a little more seriously. Mm. Um, that was the case for me. I don't know if, if other people, I've, I've heard of other people experiencing mm -hmm. that, but um, I assume that's still true. And, so maybe keep doing that. I actually asked, I did this for myself when my show was five years old, which now is two years ago. I asked myself the question, how long am I going to keep doing this? Right. What? <laughs> and it was really kind of a prayer. It was a little conversation, me and God. And the answer was 10 years. I said, okay, great. So I'm halfway there was halfway there. That was two years ago. So now we've got seven years of, of halfway there. I'm going to have 10 years, 500 episodes of that show. And that's what me and the Lord have committed to. So that's kind of how I, approach it myself. Very cool. Um, if somebody wanted to, to follow you or find out more about the Christian Podcaster Association, uh, how, how do they keep up with you or get connected? Yeah. Uh, two places I'll tell you to go. The, the best one is Christian Podcasters Association.com. Uh, you can get our mailing list and I will keep you updated about all the things that we do. Uh, but for free, if you want to go to uh, Facebook and just search Christian Podcasters Association, you'll find our Facebook group. That's totally free. You join it, get in there. You can connect and you can post, Hey, I'm, I'm new at this. I don't know what to do. Uh, and we have a ton of really helpful people who will answer your questions and, uh, and do that. And you can also, uh, always message me and I'm happy to hop on a call with you and help out. Yep. And I'm part of that group. It's a great group. Definitely. Very helpful people. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, it is. It is good. And you're, you're definitely one of those who can help out with all the stuff and the crazy, you know, tech questions or whatever people have. And you're like, Oh, this is how you fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Eric, it has been great having you today. Thanks it's so been, much. Yeah. It's been great to be here. Thanks a lot for having me.
Eric has become a great friend over the last couple of years, and I love hearing about his podcasting journey. If you want to keep up with Eric or find out more about the Christian Podcasters Association, check out the links down in the show notes below. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, you know, just click all those links, whatever they are down there, so you can keep up with us whenever we put out new content. Uh, You'll find all of our social links, links to our YouTube channel, and our online store at ChristianUrgeUnite.com. If you enjoy the show and want to help even more, consider becoming a partner on Patreon. We've changed all of our Patreon levels, and every level has great benefits and makes a huge difference in the kinds of ministries we're able to support. Supporters will also get to hear exclusive stories of believers who are serving around the world through our ministry partners. To check it out or partner with us, go to patreon.com slash Christian Nerds Unite or ChristianNerdsUnite.com and click on the support tab in the menu. And check out ChristianNerdHQ.com for more great podcasts just like this. Before you go, I do want to leave you with this blessing from Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up banners in the name of our God. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Hey.